Hot on the heels of the one-year anniversary of the Charlottesville Unite the Right protest, the media, of course, had their browbeating locked and fucking loaded. How dare Trump fail to disavow the racism? Did Trump embolden the protesters? Funny, I don't recall the media saying anything of the fucking sort when Obama said he stood in solidarity with the family of Michael Brown. You know, the same Michael Brown family that shortly after the innocent verdict was read said, of this. Let me repeat. Michael's father's words. Burn his bitch down! Burn his bitch down! Burn his bitch down! Ah, well, what's a couple billion in presidentially incited property damage between friends? The allegation against T Money appears to be that he was decrying both racism and reverse racism by stating that he disavowed racism, quote, of all kinds. To which I can only reply, Reverse racism? Nah, there's no need to append the word reverse to the fucking phrase, my friend. It's racism! Full stop. And if Donald Trump made any mistake, it was that. Appellating the phrase of all kinds to the fucker. No need, folks! Black guys being racist isn't reverse racist. It's good old-fashioned, down-home fucking racism. But don't take my word for it. Drink in the sambo-savaging screeds of famed white supremacist Chris Rock. You know who the most racist people are for real? The real most racist people? Old black men. <laughs> You find a brother over six, I know some of you white people know an old black man. You go, oh, Willie at the job, he's so nice. Willie hates your guts. <laughs> Whenever an old black man sees an old white man, the old black man always kisses the old white man's ass. Like, how you doing, sir? Pleased to meet you. Whatever I can get you, you let me know. <laughs> Soon as the white man get out of sight, he's like, cracker ass, cracker. <laughs> cracker ass, cracker, I'll put my foot in the cracker ass, cracker ass, cracker. I've said it before, I'll say it again. If you reverse a phrase and it sounds racist, classist, or discriminatory, it was all of the above to begin with. If you turn a gay pride parade into a heterosexual pride parade and it suddenly sounds like a self-important exclusionary goat fuck, guess what it was to begin with, bitch? And you can go right on down the line with this lunacy. La Raza, anyone? An organization that alternately advocated the return of Azatlan, the southwestern United States, to Mexico, whose name literally translates to, quote, the Hispanic race. Fuck, they even had an eagle and a red and black color scheme on their logo. Shoot one of their meetings in sepia with German subtitles. You think Obama'd be donating $30 million to the frothin' fuckheads? I mean, if you gank the NAACP letterhead and swap out the C, for a W, and an organization whose name itself references the fact that it's dedicated to the advancement of one ethnicity exclusively suddenly ranks a rung or two below a clan rally in the racism rankings? Guess what it was from the fucking start? And don't give me that, well they have to advance just one race because of how disadvantaged they are, horseshit. Let's see. First and worst black president, government mandated preferential treatment in college admissions and hiring, every grant in the goddamn universe firing money at you from a cannon for merely existing, yeah, it's a regular roots out there, Kunta Kinte. One glance at Chicago and it's abundantly clear, the only thing keeping black men on their knees is dodging bullets from other black men. Did you want? So, you wouldn't be uh, wrong for uh, mistaking uh, these talking points by Razor Fist as right-wing talking points or conservative talking points. But ostensibly what you have here is uh, liberal egalitarian uh, talking points. Uh, th these, again, these are, the, these are the greatest hits, right, that, that, that are playing out with this guy. That, that's how politically informed he is. Um, and I've, I've always talked about when e-celebs who built their name on non-political content, you know, a Razor Fist, Fist, excuse me, built himself as a, a pop culture critic akin to, like, nostalgia critic. That's why he has almost the same affectation. Um, I find with YouTubers, the problem is that they spent so much time making it um, on YouTube, you know, becoming a celebrity that they didn't spend any time reading up on politics and the first time that they did become uh, aware of politics uh, was through YouTube and YouTube itself is a very kind of a reactionary platform. Uh, it has a lot to do with the structure of the algorithm itself. It also has to do with the fact that uh, at one at a pivotal juncture where they had just begun monetizing um, gamers and gameplay content was very lucrative. 
And so gamer culture is deeply reactionary and generally brutally right-wing. Uh, at least the vanguard gamer culture when it came to YouTube was very re reactionary. So uh, 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 this, this uh, rageaholic guy and what he's saying here is basically um, instead of using egalitarianism as a goal, um, what, what's happening here is egalitarian rhetoric is being used, is using the concept of, of equality to prevent actual equality. So, uh, uh, Razor Fist does not want to, uh, <laughs> Razor Fist doesn't want people to, uh, uh, correct for inequality. Razor Fist is working from the assumption that everybody's equal and he's going to cherry pick uh, why you don't need progress because you know it's, it's standard liberalism shit. This this was the kind of stuff that came out. It's funny that these YouTube egalitarians hated Hillary Clinton so much because this this is the re kind of rhetoric that came out of her mouth. America is already great. Everybody's already got all the rights they need. Everybody got, has already got all the money they need. We don't need progressives. We need we need stability. We need normalcy. We need to keep things the same. So. <clears throat> Uh, Razor Fist is, and I've heard, I heard this talking the point a lot today. I guess that's why I decided to make a video about it. Uh, uh, is is doing the whole? There's no reverse to reverse racism. It's just racism, buddy. Um, and and this is ostensibly uh, like a white uh, a white uh, uh, genocide position of you know excluding cis uh, hetero people from pride is the same as segregating gay people from establishments and not allowing gay people to get married. Um, excluding uh, white people from scholarships that were designed for the advancement of black youths is the same as universities not accepting applications from uh, black youths. What happened is, well, excuse me, what happens here is that this theory you know, progressives have equality as a goal. We acknowledge that the system is unequal and has treated pe entire groups of people unequally. So the point of progress is to get to a point of uh, equilibrium where where uh, human. But again, that gets hung around our neck by liberals who go, no, no, uh, everybody's already equal. And uh, in the instances where you need to, because in order to correct for an inequality, here's the tragic thing. In order to inc uh, to correct for decades or centuries of inequality, uh, you need to technically be unfair to privileged people. So what liberals use against progressives is this idea of, oh, I thought your goal was equality. So why aren't you treating me equally? Well, because you're already in a state of inequality. That's what privilege is. You live in a state of inequality. So in order to, to bring someone else up to your living standards, uh, you know, we need to take more from you in terms of, uh, uh, you know, I always use the pizza pie analogy because it's very simple. If you uh, ordered a pizza with your friends, and uh, 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 there are eight slices in the pizza, and one person took four slices, and uh, everyone else uh, took, uh, you know, uh, uh, split up the other four slices, right? One person already has too much. He's already at a, in a state of inequality. Uh, in order to get the other people there equal, you're going to take pizza away from the person who has more than one person's portion of pizza. In order to get, you know, uh, uh, the the uh, the other four slices were split among six people, and there's seven people there, and there's eight slices. So, in order to get an equitable distribution of the pie, whether that pie is representing money or social access or cultural representation, you're going to have to um, take from one person and give to others and then the person's going to go well why didn't you take their pizza well they have less than one person's worth of pizza so we don't have to take from them we need to take from you who has four people worth of pizza 
Uh, why why can't James Bond just be white for James Bond has been white for fifty years, and in order for uh, people of color to participate in the the James Bond franchise in 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 the lead capacity, we're going to have to have a James Bond that's not white. So you're going to have to lose this one, but you've already won 49 times, so you're still ahead of the curve. Just because we're taking from you this one time doesn't mean that you're losing uh, a proportionate amount to losing everything. The, the, so, you know, uh, how this relates to, to, to racism specifically, as I mentioned here by uh, Razor Fist, is... Um, the end uh, when he compares the NAACP uh, ostensibly, even though he doesn't explicitly say it, by changing uh, the National Association for Colored Pe the Advancement of Colored People to the National Association for the Advancement of White People, and again he he tries to debunk my point by don't give me that shit, but I'm gonna give him that shit. Um, <laughs> so he gets to this idea of. Uh, uh, if we just changed one letter in the NW and the NAACP, that they would be the Klan. They would be a, a, a white power, white empowerment uh, organization. But the, the the base, the the key word here is empowerment. Um, black people have been historically, and again, people of color have been historically disenfranchised by law in this country. Um, white people for their race have not been historically disempowered so when you frame your organization as an organization to bring power to white people who have not been marginalized specifically for their skin color sure there are disadvantaged white people in this country but their fucking skin color has nothing to do with it as a matter of fact the, 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 the color of a person's skin within an ethnic group can empower them all by itself within this existing culture. Lighter skinned, more Eurocentric looking Latinos like me are given preferential treatment by the capitalist order. Uh, uh, lighter skinned, uh, more Eurocentric looking African Americans, lighter skinned, more Eurocentric looking Asians are given uh, preferential treatment by this existing post-apartheid system. So it's not even as simple as fully being a member of the white race. All you have to really do is look the part and you get a little bit of bonus added to the quality of life. And no, you don't have to be a millionaire or billionaire to be privileged. Privilege can extend to all kinds of different circumstances, uh, particularly in the social sense and, and in a society where capitalism uh, is is the predominant uh, is the predominant uh, 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 philosophy and, and and economic system, social privilege does translate to money. It translates to money in the long term, because if the, the, if, if the existing order, if the existing power structure favors Eurocentricity, then Eurocentric people of all kinds are going to get entree to jobs and they're going to get entree to higher education affirmative action is not uh affirmative action is a band-aid but affirmative action is not uh, equality at light speed so no uh so whatever you want to play the semantic game and and talk about oh reverse racism isn't a thing uh fine there's small r racism which is racism that has no uh, existential threat to a group of people, which is the predominance of what these people would call reverse racism. Uh, this idea of, okay, so technically affirmative action is racial discrimination. Okay, but see, you're you're back on, onto these absolute goods and goods unto themselves or absolute evils. So racial discrimination is not a, a absolute evil. It's just a question of what you're using that tool for. Are you using that tool to enforce oppression, or are you using the tool of racial racial uh, distinction uh, to to empower people who have been marginalized by that specific uh, factor, that specific qualifier? 